Hello, Wanda the Foiling Rock Lady here, and I want to work on this elephant with you. It's going to be a lacy, rainbow, kind of zentangly dealy. I didn't do the designs in there, I just wanted to use the outline. So, um, just to help me figure out which laces I want to put in there, because I have lots and lots of different black lace. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, the things I might use today are Apple Barrel Black with a liner brush, um, Uniposca 1MR Black, it's the very small dipped pen, uh, paint pen, very nice. Doesn't bleed some tweezers to deal with the foils and some scissors to cut them. A disposable eyeliner brush to apply nail foil glue to the rock to uh, apply our nail foils with. That's by SXC Nail Art Foil Glue. Treasure Gold. I'm probably going to use a different color, but I don't have the bottle. So Treasure Gold in a bottle like this called Mayan Gold 5541 would be the color by Folk Art. Okay. And this is a beautiful Santorini. I'll also be curing that glue with a 6 watt Mac Art mini light, possibly 12 volt UV LED light. And I also have a Beatles 84 watt that may come into play. I don't know yet. <laughs> Those are the lights that I generally use. Most of the time it's just the little guy, like this one. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is line first to help me keep control of the glue helps it to stay where it needs to be. So I will just start with a liner brush that's been cut down so it's very very thin. Very thin liner brush. I'm going to move the camera. Hang on. Okay. And I'm going to line everywhere everything, the entire elephant that I sketched on. Traced, actually, I traced this with carbon paper, which is simple. You can get a pack of carbon paper from Amazon. I don't remember the count, but it was not very expensive, and you get lots of paper, so you'll have it forever. <laughs> you only use a little bit of each piece for doing rocks. So, anyways, you know, the Posca pen would make quick... A job of this but I feel like it might not be thin enough I may reline in gold also so I'll have a double line black and gold line together maybe not positive yet so if you're painting along with me, I would like you to line your rock with your black paint. You can use Posca or whatever you're comfortable with. And then in 2.5 seconds, I'll be right back. Hello. I just wanted to do the last little section with you so you could see fine lining with a brush is doable. I know I struggled a little bit, but I purposely didn't use pens at first so that I could learn how to use a brush. Now pens are wonderful and I recently started using them to save time for tutorials, but there's some things that, uh, need to be finer than the finest pen, I guess. That's a good way to put it. Anyways, it takes a little bit of practice, but oh, things are so beautiful. That's what art is, practice. But it's also interpretation. So my beautiful might not be your beautiful. So if this elephant is not what you're up for, make it your own. 
maybe leave off the, the lines and don't do um, doodling or foils. Maybe just paint it, make it a pretty elephant. You certainly don't have to do foils with me. Just paint with me. So yeah, I think I've decided I want to line it with the Mayan Mayan gold by Treasure Art. Treasure <laughs> by Folk Art. Treasure gold in Mayan. I'm going to do that outer part in the gold. So I'm going to go right on the outside of the black lines. So the same thing again, go around your entire elephant and like in on the insides, also go on the top of your line. Try to stay on the top like so. And if you do too much, you can always go back and touch up your black. So no worries. Hello, so I got the gold done. Now I'm going back in with the black and touching up. So uh, I'll let you see what I'm doing here. Just catching in where I was and then following it around. I like to make sure I have a nice thick line to keep my watercolors in. Hi there, I'm back. Okay, so I'm going to be using Chromatech watercolor brush pens, and I'm basically going to do rainbow. So I'm going to start up in here with some pink. I might go back over that a bit here. Amethyst. And 
and I am not really staying in each square like you notice I put a little in this one because that way we can just keep blending them actually I'm gonna And then red. It's probably a good idea to have a um, brush pen, an empty watercolor brush pen, not a black one, an empty one. Where did I put that? Oh boy. Anyways, good to have a empty one. You could fill this with water, but I just like to dip it in water and use it to blend out the colors. Make sure your water's clean and clear and don't get it too, too wet. You don't want it sopping wet. You just want to be able to blend your colors. You don't want it running outside of outside of your lined paint here. And just as a reminder, paint, uh, watercolor paint on rocks uh, oxidizes really fast. So you want to get to it and then get it covered with your foil before it loses its brightness, if that makes sense. And then vermilion is next. Tangerine. And just blend that right up into the vermilion. And then bring it down here. Next is orange. Do the same thing. Blend it up into the tangerine. I'm liking this so much already. Oh boy. I love these pens. Okay, and then next is flesh. And it's very light. Just gonna bring just a smidge. I'm going to the yellow. And I think I'm going to start like <laughs> the fluorescent. Let's see, that might be too yellow. But just like right over the flesh, just on top of the flesh. And 
And then lemon yellow. Where is my regular yellow? Deep yellow. Marigold. Very weird. Golden yellow. I thought I had a regular yellow. Okay, so we will start with deep yellow. Golden yellow. Lemon yellow. Yellow green, appropriate. <laughs> and remember, if you get the other color on your watercolor brush pen tip, all you gotta do is wipe it off and it's right back to its normal color. <laughs> yellow green then fluorescent green sorry for the wiggle and i'm just putting just a, a hair line into the yellow and then bringing a line down here and then i guess grass grass green it's even lighter. And then green, regular green. And I take this yellow, green, and blend these so there's not a harsh line there. I don't like that. Turquoise. Just a smidge up there and into the next section. Egyptian blue. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start in here with deep purple. Violet. And 
Midnight Blue. Blue. I'm going to put Heron Blue in the Elephant Eyes in here. It's just a lighter blue-gray color. And Sky Blue to blend these blues down. And then Azure, or Azuri, I always say this one wrong. And then bring this one down just a smidge. Turquoise is just almost the same color. <laughs> we'll go Egyptian green. Oh no, Persian green. Where's Egyptian blue? Where did it go? Oh, green. idea. Persian green it is. Add a little of that there.
bottle green. I'm going to take the Egyptian green, or Persian green, sorry, and blend these. green emerald Yellow green, fluorescent yellow. Deep yellow. Green. Vermilion. Carmine. Bright pink. Byzantine. And we are finished with our color. I'm going to leave the tusks white. I may add a smidge of flesh to them, but I'll have to, uh, no, that's not going to work. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> Maybe ginger watered down a bit. So I don't want them super white, if you feel me. Where, there you are. Get some water in here. I'm going to be too orange. Huh? Just to take some of that white out of it, but not much. I'm 
I'm going to draw back, draw up some of this water that I put in there. It was too much. Okay, I'll let that dry. All right, let the fun begin. This is what we're here for, right? All right, pour off some of your glue into a well. And because we're doing this whole elephant face, probably quite a bit. Get your disposable eyeliner brush and your foils ready. Start your engines. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use polka dots and stars and fishnet, I think. I wanna have one wacky elephant here. Okay, I'm gonna start here. And I'm gonna do the ears all polka dot. So, I'm going to do a few sections at a time. Just remember to try to keep your glue off of your lines because you want that pillowy separation. So I want some feedback guys and my question is I pause a lot and uh, because I <laughs> awkward silence you know I don't know how to fill this uh, space empty space with words so do you prefer silence and just to watch me paint for an hour or two it would probably be more like two sometimes three and stop the pauses or Keep pausing that way. You don't have these long stretches of me just not talking and painting. Let me know in the comment section because, you know, I'm still learning how to please everyone on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. On social media, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, I am going to stop here because I'm on a curvature of my rock and I don't want it to drip down, so I'm going to do a cure I got some bubbles, so I'm trying to move those to the edge because those are not our friend. Just like resin, those bubbles cause holes. Come on. Okay, I guess I'm going to have bubble. I'm just going to hit it real quick with this so it doesn't drip off the side. Boom, 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 boom. And then do a cure with my light. Okay, cured. And I'm going to apply my foils. Let me show you before I apply it. I'm going to pick it up. In the orange, you're going to see some divots. See those? Those were bubbles. So the bubbles rise and they pop and they leave little holes. So if you're having that happen, it's because there's bubbles in your glue or your light is too aggressive. Um, when the glue goes down in here, you can see there's a few bubbles. Try to, they, it's really hard to remove bubbles. See, they don't pop or move. So try to move them like out of the bowl. Like so. And then be gentle when you're going in, picking up your glue, not to stir it or anything like that. Like I do, I sit here and poke. Don't do that. Don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> Don't be like me. All right, shiny side up, dull side goes on your rock. And we do have a pattern, so I'm gonna try to line it up so that I can see my pattern for next 
So I'll start in the same area. And I'm gonna get my tool, which has silicone powder, I mean has chrome powder on it, but this will help me get around my edges nice and sharp. Also, those little holes that I just made, this will, because it's soft and it smushes down in there, will help get in there. It's a silicone tip nail tool. Amazon. <laughs> okay. When you're taking off your foil, you want to check it before you just rip it off and make sure that it's laid it's laying down the way you want it to. tickled about that but okay those bubbles see bubbles cause problems but it's not too bad isn't that cute all right so I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna do my ears with the polka dots if I can get the foil to let me go. <laughs> All right, one side done with polka dots. What do you think? I'm liking it. Okay, guys, I got the ears done. And I'm gonna do the face and the trunk with stars and mesh. In one fair swoop so I am going to foil all of the or glue all of these sections at once and then cure it because I'm bad to the bone <laughs> just kidding oh my goodness I didn't mean that anyways you don't have to do that you can do it one you know little section at a time or you can do more than one I just get impatient so I'm gonna do more than one I'm gonna do a whole bunch <laughs> So I'm going to try very hard to behave myself and not make up bubbles in my glue. I don't know why I like poking it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Call me crazy. <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to just do my thing going around where the color is. Trying to stay off of the lines. That's why I like really bold lines when I'm doing foil so I have good guidelines basically and with this pattern the more glue you use the more pillowy of effect you get with the foil and I just love that look a lot of people are scared to use a lot of glue because it caught sometimes it causes wrinkles and if your glue wrinkles, not these bumps, but wrinkles, that's your light. Your light is probably too strong. If you don't have the option of getting another light, you can put distance between your rock and the light when it's curing. Reduce your cure time and then put distance between your rock. Like instead of putting it like this, bring it up like so. I can't guarantee you that it'll work, but it has for me in the past. Also, you can make what's called a tester rock. Get a rock, put dots on it of glue, try different cure times, different heights, make notes. Basically a science project. Margie Brody at Rock and Our Art made a tutorial on just that. It's called a test rock tutorial. I'll put a link in uh, the description for you so you can find it. It's a great tutorial on how to get to know your light and your glue. And I sure do thank her for that. Because let me tell you, starting out with this glue and light business was pretty rough. It's, you know, I had an idea of what would work. 
but it didn't always work and I couldn't figure out, you know, all of it by myself. So it was trial and error, trial and error. And I think now we've got it figured out. When I say we, me and my friends and my foilers have figured out that certain glues work hands down better than others. Some glues don't work at all. And they may work on nails, but we're working on rocks. So I can only recommend a couple of different glues that I know for sure work on rocks pretty much every time. And that is MacArt or MacArt. I don't know exactly how to say it, but M-A-K-A-R-R-T. And that is nail art foil glue. I love them on Amazon. And then there's SX Seabrand, which is what I'm using. I've pretty much switched over to it because it's basically the same thing. They are so similar, half the price, and I can't justify spending double for the same thing, pretty much. So it's called SXC, and that's also on Amazon. Even the packaging is so, so similar. I, I think it could be the same company. If not, shame on them. <laughs> This is going to be so cool. This is the first elephant I've ever done. So I was nervous. But I'm pretty proud. I'm going to put... Hopefully I'll remember. I always say I'm going to do something and then I don't do it. You guys probably get tired of that. But I want to put a rhinestone here. Here and here and here and here. And I don't want to forget. So I hope I don't forget. The great thing is I use Mr. Resin now in pretty much the winter, I guess because it's too cold for the resin to set right now. Anyways, uh, Mr. Resin Cures, it's a UV resin and it cures in a few minutes and it's amazing. So I will be using that to cure my rock and set the rhinestones because I don't like to put my rhinestones on and then resin because you lose your facets. So if you want your rhinestones to sparkle, set them in your resin, not under it. And I can show you what I'm talking about. Quit poking, no bubbles. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and glue up and I will be right back with you to show you what I did. Okay, glue is cured. I'm going to set down my stars. Yeek. Let's see. There's your racking. Gotta be careful because this print is not all the way to the edge over there. Okay. I'm going to use the duty end. I got my rhinestones all picked out. They're going to be so pretty. Okay, stars and polka dots. Pretty elephant. I need to do his forehead. I forgot. What should I do in there? Da, 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 da. Let's see what I can come up with some rhinestones. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, 
So I think, let me get my rhinestone tool. You're going to like this. I'd like to find it here. Yes. Ta-da. Wax tip. You know, the pencils that you sharpen are great and all, but they just crumble and then they leave little stuff on your rhinestones that's not cool. So I have one here. Well, come on, you little booger. Okay. I think I want that one right there. I'm just showing you where the placement is. So, then I'll put on my resin and we will set these while it's cooking. That's very beautiful. Oh my goodness. So, for this one, maybe this way. Nope. Nope. Maybe marquee. That might work, huh? Yes. Oh boy, so gorgeous. Now I need a little bitty one. Hmm. Should I put a heart? An upside down heart? <laughs> Triangle. This guy. Okay, let's see. That's awful pretty. But I think it's too much here. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, a small triangle maybe. I think mm. Anyways, um, we will set this in with the I'm gonna make a flower. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> they all go one direction. Hmm. Okay, so the marquees and the teardrop. I forgot to do the tusks. So I put glue on it and cured it and now I'm using a transparent foil that's holographic. Basically makes pearls on Santorini so beautiful. Oh my goodness, look at those tusks. Okay, so now we're going to do some Mr. Resin. Yay. Get Mr. Beetle over here. Mr. Beetles and Mr. Resin. A rare form tonight. Oh, I forgot to sign it. Oops.
Okay, back on. So you want to put some on your rock, Mr. Resin. Squirt it off. And then rub it around. Be careful with the bubbles. Now you're not going to go all the way around to the back of your rock. You are just doing the top and the sides. If you want to do the back, you need to do it separate. And because the bubbles don't rub, I, you know what I mean, don't. So you can see the bubbles around the face there. So just with your gloved hand, slowly pull them off. Might need some more. Don't grab your resin bottle <laughs> with your glove all resin. You know what I mean? Okay, and then you want to kind of let it settle for a few <laughs> before you put it into that light because if you've got any wrinkles or, you know, uneven spots, it will cure that way. I mean, well, that's no fun, you know. Now this mat I have down here on my desk, it's shelf liner and I've got it turned over to the bumpy sides on the other side. It's called Easy Liner. It's amazing. Resin just pops right off of it. Everything just pops right off of it. So cool. Okay, so it's nice and glossy. I'm going to pop it in my light. 84 watt Mr. or it's Beetles. Mr. Beetle. I don't know why I call it that. Okay, it's Beatles, 84 watt. <laughs> I'm going to do the 120 second timer, probably three times in a row. I lied. What I meant to say was I'm going to pop it in there for 30 seconds, pull it back out, and put my rhinestones in it. <laughs> okay, got to move kind of quickly here. This end, you can move these around, move them into place. Oh, I think I might have cured it all <laughs> too fast. Hmm. All right, if that's the case, I need to put a little bit, get my disposable brush, grab a little resin. I'll put a little right here. Just a little bit.
You know, they don't call me the foil lady for nothing. So this, I walk around with foil on me. <laughs> Pretty much 24-7. Okay, a little dot of resin here. And here. And here. And here. I think it looks good. <laughs> Can you guys tell me? Is this straight? Okay, quick. To set that. One, two, three. Now pop it back in there for the rest of the cure time, which is probably about four minutes. Three cycles at 120. All right, guys, we are done. One beautiful rainbow polka dot star elephant. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today here for this tutorial and if you liked what you saw here today and you had fun and you'd like to see more hit the bell so you can be notified when I'm uploading new content uh, also please subscribe that way I'm hoping for 10,000 people and we can go live that is so much fun all right I will see you again shortly with more tutorials